pre-listening activities, part one of a three-part video series about listening, adapted by Peggy Marcy, professor at Cal State University San Bernardino, from J.J. Wilson's textbook, How to Teach Listening. Most listening scholars advocate a three-step approach to teaching listening, pre-listening, while listening, and post-listening. Let's start with pre-listening. In mud eels are, in clay none are. What did I just say? In mud eels are, in clay none are. It means that you can find eels in mud, but not in clay. Even reading the statement, it's difficult to understand. Cole, Jackamick, and Cooper in 1980 used this statement for their research, and it was impossible for the listeners to understand what was being said. They could usually get the word in repeated twice because it's not connected to another word in the sentence. But in English, when a word ends with a consonant and the next word begins with a vowel, we usually pronounce them as one connected or linked word. This is often called linking in pronunciation textbooks. So instead of saying mud eels are, we say mud eels are. Without context, the listener does not know where to break the words apart for comprehending. Therefore, research has shown the importance of providing context and other information before asking the learners to actually listen. What kinds of information is helpful to the listener in pre-listening? According to Wilson in How to Teach Listening, we should know what the speaker sounds like. Perhaps you've had the experience of watching a movie and expecting U.S. style of English, but instead you got British English. Eventually, your ears could adjust, but if the listening exercise is short and there is anything unusual about the talking, then it is strongly suggested that you play just a little piece of the listening to the students before asking them to actually listen in order to help their hearing adjust beforehand. Unfortunately, since much textbook listening is devoid of anything unusual, this may not be a necessary step. Another issue is how long the students should listen. It's easier to concentrate for short periods than it is for longer ones, but if they know it's a longer story or lecture, then they can prepare their mind properly. Also, it is helpful for them to know who is supposed to be the audience and what the audience is expected to do with the information. If the audience is supposed to be someone listening for their flight information and they're expected to make note of it, then it helps the student to know that. If the student expects to hear a train, st train station announcement instead of an airport announcement, they could get confused. If the picture in the textbook makes it clear that it's an airport announcement, then the instructor will not need to say anything. If, however, there is ambiguity about the possible audience, then the teacher should directly tell the class what to expect. Another piece of helpful information is the relationship between the listener and the speaker. I believe this is becoming more important as we move into an era where the younger generation has no clear understanding of changing the formality of their language based upon who they're talking to. Therefore, it can be helpful for the teacher to point out if the speaker is in a more powerful position than the listener, or if they are both buddies, or something in between. However, this might also be something you ask them to discover for themselves while listening. Also, the listeners should have an idea about what the topic is. If the listeners in the research study had known they would be hearing a sentence about the habitat of eels, they may have been able to comprehend from, from the beginning. There are lots of ways to activate a learner's prior knowledge about a topic, such as brainstorming, asking them to personalize the topic, doing pre-reading, or doing research. Of course, if there's specialized vocabulary or idioms or slang in the listening, then those should be pre-taught. They usually need to be checked again in post-listening, even if you pre-teach them. Lastly, make sure every student understands what they're supposed to do while they're listening. They should know this before they listen, not afterwards. They should always have a reason for listening. This is where I'll stop with my pre-listening comments. The next video in the series will look at while listening activities.